All right. We ask that if you have any questions throughout this session, that you type your questions in the Q&A box. We will answer those questions at the end of today's presentation. We ask that there be no video recording at any point throughout the session. The session will be recorded and posted to the Office of Undergraduate Admissions YouTube page at a later date, so stay tuned for that. And definitely make sure you use our hashtag, hashtag NCATOH20, to let us know how you are enjoying the day. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. I would like to introduce to you our Interim Associate Dean for the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences, Dr. Whitley. Thank you so much for that introduction. So we're going to um, jump in here in just a second. I am going to uh, share a screen here. I will also try to monitor um, the question and answers or any of the, the chats that may go on. But welcome, welcome to the virtual open house, the fall open house. So it's a little different for us. Normally we're sitting at a table and you come by and uh, our various chairs and so forth uh, talk to you and tell you a little bit about the program and you can have a little in-depth discussion with them. So it's a little bit different for all of us. I'm gonna go through a uh, short PowerPoint and then uh, at the end, gonna give you time to, um, we'll, we'll have our chairs and uh, panelists to introduce themselves and then we'll give you the opportunity to ask questions. So again, welcome to the virtual open house. I'm the Interim Associate Dean for the college. The Dean is Dr. Francis Ward Johnson. We have six departments in the college, including criminal justice, English, history and political science, journalism and mass communication, liberal studies and visual and performing arts. We enroll more than 1900 students and we have more than 160 faculty members. The college teaches about 35% of the general education courses. And the programming is based upon uh, employment trends and they're gonna capitalize on the elements of the arts, the humanities and the social sciences. Graduates of our college are prepared to be workforce ready. So that means when you come to one of our programs, you get a degree, you can go out into the workforce or you, you'll be prepared for graduate and or professional schools. And we have a lot of students that may go to a graduate program or they may go to a professional school like law school, or you, know, you may go uh, and get an MFA uh, in, in theater or in the arts or something like that, uh, or even uh, their MFAs in English and um, go to business school. So there are a lot of opportunities of where you can go uh, after you graduate into the workforce or to graduate or professional school. We take pride in that we have student-centered programs and we have world-class scholarship and innovative pedagogy um, teaching strategies that our faculty use. In the department, students engage in experiences that prepare, prepare them for the future, such as internships, study abroad, opportunities to learn from distinguished scholars and to study in emerging fields. I'm gonna you know, really uh, encourage you that whatever program you go into, you need to look at internships. Some of our programs require internships to graduate, and that's a good thing. And, but they may only require one internship. But regardless of if the program requires an internship or not, everybody needs to do an internship and you need to start doing them as soon as you can, like maybe even freshman year. There are internships available uh, from freshman uh, all the way up to senior. And depending on what that internship uh, entails, you know, it may take a little experience or it may need a lot of your uh, coursework completed. So that's something to keep in mind. Study abroad is something that we've always encouraged our students to do. Uh, it works in nicely with most of the curriculums that we offer. Uh, right now, you know, that's a little bit on hold, but it will come back. And so that's something that you need to start looking at and looking at how you can work that into uh, perhaps your program at some point, either, you know, semester or during summer. The mission of the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences is to prepare students for a global workforce by providing high quality academic programs, scholarly research, and service that are innovative and interdisciplinary. The college embraces the mission of the university as a land-grant doctoral institution 
with a commitment to excellence in all disciplines. We have a couple of um, unique features within our college. We have a professional academic advisor that is located um, in the same building that the Dean's office is located and English is there and theater is there. Um, and that's in the, the general classroom building, but that is uh, Tanya Hamilton. And so she basically advises most of the freshmen in the college. So if you're a freshman, you're gonna to talk to her. She's gonna help you through that first year and then you're gonna be passed off to your department for advising. Now this is also done in conjunction with the department. So she's, she knows exactly what the departments want and what they're looking for. And she's gonna point you in that right direction and point you towards uh, the advisor that will uh, take you over after your freshman year. We also have a career coach and that, um, that is Shay Braswell. And she is also located in the general classroom building on the, on the first floor. This is the person that you want to um, talk to and get to know because she is focused in helping students identify internships, jobs, and graduate school opportunities. Now she is uh, part of the career services uh, unit. And so that office helps with resume writing and they have a lot of other kind of opportunities for you to uh, to take part of. Our career fairs and, and things like that, she's heavily involved in that, will help you uh, get signed up for the career fair and, and get you there. Every week she sends the chairs a list of internships that are available within their disciplines. And so this is someone that you need to uh, get to know your freshman year. Points of pride. You know, we like to talk about the things that we do well and we do a lot of things well. So let's just talk about a couple of them because uh, we can't mention them all. a and is ranked as one of the top eight campuses in America for undergraduate degrees awarded to African-Americans in the visual and performing arts and for master's degree awarded to African-Americans in English literature and letters. Journalism mass communication department is nationally recognized in several areas. Its National Association of Black Journalists chap student chapter was named the 2018 Student Chapter of the Year, and its public relations program is recently ranked number eight in America. The Visual Arts program was ranked the number one program among HBCUs in North Carolina in 2018, and was ranked number five in the nation among all HBCUs. So I mean, those are some things that we need to, that we're really proud of, and that really gives just a taste of what you're gonna get in the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. And before I move on, several of our programs are, uh, re are um, accredited by their professional disciplines. And that is something that also is not easy to achieve. And some of the programs have actually been accredited for a good number of years. Uh, and some of the programs are just one of a handful in the entire state that's accredited, or one of a handful of HBCUs accredited. So let's go quickly through the departments. So first, the Department of Criminal Justice. They have a BS in criminal justice, a minor in criminal justice. I'm gonna pause here for just a second and talk about minors. Your sophomore year, you can declare a minor. A minor is a great thing to have. It can complement your degree, or it could be something that's totally different, so you get a whole different kind of flavor. There are a lot of minors, not only offered within our college, but in other colleges. And so you need to look at all the monitors that are available, talk to your advisor, um, have that discussion, kind of think about what might fit in with what you are trying to do. And this also actually works great that if you uh, change your major, then you might be able to actually take the coursework that you had started in the other major and use it as uh, a minor. It might develop into a minor. So that's also something to keep in mind. But monitors are, are great kind of things to have. Uh, it will be designated on your transcript, but you won't see it on your diploma or anything like that, but it will be on your transcript. So criminal justice also has a certificate in forensic science crime scene investigation. Department of English, a BA in English, a BA in English with a concentration in African-American literature, a BA in English with a concentration in creative writing, another concentration in technical writing, a BA in secondary education, English, so this is the first department we're looking at that offers a secondary education program. And we actually have several other um, departments that offer a secondary education degree. 
So this is uh, working in conjunction with the College of Education. They have also our only master's program in the college, out and out master's program in the college. It's an MA in English and African American Literature. Now they do have a Master of Arts in teaching in English, but that basically is a, that program is basically housed over in the College of Education, but the disciplinary expertise comes out of, um, out of the Department of English. And they have a minor in English. So the next department the, uh, is of history and political science. So they have a BA in history. Here's our second secondary education program. And it's a, it's in history, a BA in secondary education history. They have a BA in political science. They also have a master of arts in teaching. And again, that program comes out of the College of uh, Education, but the disciplinary uh, subject matter comes out of the Department of History. They have a minor in history and a minor in African American history. So they have two minors. Now this third one here is kind of interesting. It's a minor in military leadership. And you can either go commission army, commission air force, or non-commission. So if you're an RO ROTC, this is a great minor to have because you're taking these courses anyway. And that's actually why this minor was created because you're basically completing a minor just by what you have to take uh, through the ROTC. Some students, want um, the leadership knowledge and, and the experience that that minor offers, but they're not in ROTC. So there's a non-commissioned track. So that's for everybody else who's not in ROTC uh, or in um, the Air Force program. They also have a minor in political science. The Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, they have three Bachelor of Science degree with three different concentrations mass media production, multimedia journalism, and public relations. And they offer a minor in three, in those three areas, mass media production, multimedia journalism, and public relations. Uh, another thing you wanna keep in mind with minors, uh, you need to look and see if they have some kind of uh, particular uh, requirement. Some minors may have a GPA requirement. Uh, so you need to pay attention to those also. The Department of Liberal Studies, they have a BA in liberal studies with three different concentrations, and that is African American studies, applied cultural thought, and pre-law. The minors are very different than what we've seen in other departments. Uh, this department has a minor in French, philosophy, and Spanish. The Department of Visual and Performing Arts, they have three different program areas. So the first one we're gonna look at is music. They have two BA in music, one is general and one is performance. And this is another secondary education degree in music. To major in music, you need to have the ability to read music well, experience playing a musical instrument or singing. And they say preferably in grade school, they're talking about that you, you can't come to this program and say, I think it'd be really kind of nifty to get a degree in music. Never picked up an instrument, uh, some people tell me that maybe I can carry to them, not real sure about that, so I think I'll major in music and find out. No, 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 no. You need to already know that you're good at it. You've had lessons for a very, very long time because they're going to give you an audition and then they're going to make you take a music theory test. So you've got to be able to pass, you know, a music theory test and pass the audition. So again, you know, you're coming very, very practiced and if you ever look at their curriculum, I mean, it's, it's just packed full of, um, you know, nonstop music classes and, and performance classes and so forth. Theater arts. So that's the second program area. The only Bachelor of Fine Arts is in this department. The only one on campus. So they have a BFA in professional theater, and then there are two different concentrations. So the first one is acting. The second one is theater technology. And they offer a minor in professional theater and a minor in dance. Their third area is visual arts. So they have a Bachelor of Arts in Visual Arts Design and then a concentration in Visual Media Design. And then they also have a Bachelor of Arts in Secondary Education, Art Education. So before I get to questions, I do want to talk a little bit about, uh, because visual and performing arts and even journalism, mass communication, well actually most of the other departments may have some kind of student organization or some kind of activity 
that you may be able to participate in even if you're not a major. And that's definitely true for uh, visual and performing arts. Uh, you may be able to play an instrument well, uh, but you don't want to major in music, but you wanna be a part of the band or you wanna be a part of one of the performance bands or you can sing, so you wanna be in one of the choirs. Uh, and if you know anything about a and you've seen the band and you've probably heard uh, several of their choirs uh, because they, they've got you know, not only national recognition, they have international recognition. Those are things that you can audition for. They also have um, the, the Richard B. Harrison players. And so they, uh, throughout the, the season, they put on, or the year, I guess they put on about four plays a year. And yeah, four plays a year. And um, anybody can audition for the plays. And so the last time you'll go to the play and you'll say, oh, look, look at all the non-theater majors here. So this is something that you can participate there. Um, if you go to uh, the media on campus, the campus newspaper, uh, you don't have to be a journalism major to work at the newspaper. Uh, you can also volunteer at the radio station. Uh, and we've got a fabulous radio station. Uh, I believe that's 90.1 FM, The Voice. Um, and so uh, you'll see that uh, a lot of the alums that, that you may see actually nationally uh, participated and some of our own campus media outlets. And so, uh, so some things to keep in mind, uh, and English may have a couple of publications or something like that that, uh, that you may be able to write uh, for. Um, so, uh, and, I, and I see there are a couple of questions. So I'm gonna look at those questions, but while I do that, I'd actually like for our panelists to introduce themselves and to uh, give a word or two about their department. I guess because criminal justice is the first one, I'll take the I'll take the start. I'm George Johnson, and I'm the interim chair uh, in the Department of Criminal Justice, and uh, we are excited about your interest in North Carolina A and T, and certainly hope that we can enlist some interest in the criminal justice program here. We have a we have a department in the pro it has really two tracks. Uh, Dean Whitley mentioned them earlier. We have a general track, but we also have a track for. Uh, Crime Scene Investigation Forensics. Uh, they're, they're two separate curricula, uh, but uh, we encourage you to look at those because they are very exciting. Both of them are very exciting programs. In criminal justice, we prepare you for um, to leave a and and to go immediately into gainful employment. But if you are interested in furthering your education uh, with a master's or professional degree, uh, you will be are prepared uh, to venture into those areas as well. A number of our students, our graduates, are working for um, security agencies, uh, for the FBI, uh, for the uh, Secret Service. Uh, we have other students who um, who go on to law school. A very popular, uh, a very popular major, uh, for very popular activity for our students who uh, who are interested in in law. We also have a number of student organizations where you can further your interest. And again, these are open to criminal justice students, but they're also open to other students in the, uh, uh, in the university. We have the E.A. Ralston Criminal Justice Society, uh, which does a plethora of programming over the, over the year. Uh, there is the Henry Fry Free Law Society that we work in cooperation with uh, the Department of Liberal Studies, uh, if you have any interest in those. We have a mock trial program. This year, of course, because of the limitations on our meeting personally, our um, competitions have been, uh, have been minimized. We are, but our students are still preparing uh, because we still want to, to hone those skills, even though the number of opportunities for competitions around the country will be, uh, will be reduced. And there's finally the um, Criminal Justice Honor Society. Uh, with a 3.5 average, uh, you can be inducted into the National Criminal Justice Law Society. Finally, uh, ours is one of the departments uh, in the university, in the college, that does require an internship of every student. Uh, we think this is a, a wonderful component to your academic preparation so that you can get some 
feel for the various kinds of opportunities that are available through internships. Many people should just think initially that law enforcement is the only avenue out there, but there are a number of other avenues, and so the internship gives you an opportunity to explore those. And so we hope you will con continue to consider uh, criminal justice, and uh, we look forward to talking to those of you who may be interested. Okay, I guess I'll go next. I think English was second. Um, and so like Dr. Johnson mentioned, I'm, I'm Dr. Jason DiPolo, chairperson of the Department of English. And uh, as Dr. Johnson mentioned, I'm very happy that you're interested in becoming an Aggie. Um, and I'd be even happier if you're interested in becoming an English Aggie. Uh, so a few things about the department. Um, you know, we do prepare our students as was discussed by Dr. Whitley um, in a number of different concentrations. Uh, so we do prepare students with the hard skills from a traditional literary and writing background. Uh, and that, of course, branches off into traditional Western literatures, African American literatures. We also offer a number of courses in African literatures. Um, and then, of course, our writing program is kind of a two pronged, where you can pursue creative writing and specialize either in fiction, uh, poetry, or screenwriting. And that is, of course, uh, screenwriting for TV, movies, that sort of thing. And then, of course, our other track is the technical writing course. And it's basically courses that focus in professional and technical communication. Uh, those students often go on to careers writing for government, uh, writing in medical fields, uh, as well as writing for business. Uh, as well as writing for the sciences. Uh, so I would like to mention also that, you know, it's, it's not just about that kind of traditional uh, English major. You know, we've reshaped our programs to meet 21st century global markets, and we prepare our students with the soft skills, uh, such as analytical reasoning, uh, critical thinking, uh, communication skills that have proven very profitable uh, for our students. Who also, you know, who obviously go on to the traditional graduate programs, uh, masters, and/or PhD programs in English studies, um, but also law school. Uh, some of our recent graduates uh, received a job. One went to Los Angeles to work for a software company. Uh, another recent graduate currently works with the Washington Redskins. Uh, and so, I guess the you know point I'm trying to make is there seems to be this traditional kind of paradigm that well. With an English degree, you either go to graduate school or teach. Our program is uh, definitely proving otherwise. Um, we have a number of internship opportunities our program offers. And as uh, Dr. Whitley mentioned, there are a number of publication uh, possibilities there as well. We do have a in-house literary journal uh, that we publish that contains both fiction, poetry, screenwriting, photography, as well as some art. Um, and that journal, of course, is not just for A&T students, but we do receive uh, submissions from outside artists and writers as well. Uh, we have a spoken word troupe uh, in the department. They are called the Poetic Insurgents, uh, who do a number of different, um, you know, performances across campus and in the community. Uh, and I should say that both the uh, journal as well as the spoken word troupe are interestingly, they're tied to classes. You know, so you're not only participating in those groups, but you're also earning credit in that you're kind of uh, learning the ins and outs of publishing as well as, you know, of course, the spoken word. Uh, we also have a poetry website of which offers publication opportunities. Uh, each year or two, we have a Aggie Poet Laureate and he or she then is able to uh, present at a number of different occasions in the community. Uh, we had one who recently read, for example, at the Greensboro City Council. Uh, they generally read at our fall convocation. Uh, so they're, they're, they extend their reach well beyond just the department. Um, and also we too, as Dr. Johnson mentioned, have an honor society. Our International English Honor Society is Sigma Tau Delta. Uh, just a year or two ago, we were awarded uh, by them for having one of the oldest chapters. We have 
our chapter has existed in the department for 40 years. And so we've had that organization for quite some time. And it affords members an opportunity to attend conferences, uh, to present papers, and as well as uh, they have two journals. One's a literary journal, um, and the other is a creative writing journal. And so with that, I'll keep it short. And if you, again, I look forward to talking to you about any questions uh, that you may have regarding the English programs and concentrations, and we welcome you with open arms. Liberal studies actually may be next. I'm going the alphabet in my head. I'm also trying to answer some of the questions that, um, that, that I'm, I'm typing the answers to. So if you can go and look and see uh, basically what I've answered the, or the questions that I've answered. Uh, and the panelists can also go and look at those and see if you want to add something else to what I've put in there. Um, but uh, I'm also serving as the uh, interim chair for liberal studies. Liberal studies is a very flexible degree. Uh, the one uh, concentration that we have is pre-law and that definitely uh, sets you up um, to go to law school. And so that is the, the whole aim of that. And there are a couple of different ways to get into that. And that, you, that has some uh, particular kind of requirements uh, for that, um, that there can be an accelerated path uh, so that maybe your time to the bachelor's, you're not earning less hours, but you're just actually doing it um, in a quicker time frame. Um, so Dr. Galen Forsman is actually the, um, the coordinator of that program, and he would be the person in liberal studies to talk about for the, the pre-law. Uh, as far as the uh, other three concentrations, um, they're a lot more flexible, and you know you can basically uh, turn a degree into anything. It depends on how you spin it. And because the liberal uh, studies degrees are kind of flexible, you may have a, a variety of different kind of experiences or, or classes. They may be more interdisciplinary. So you're kind of getting a, a taste of a lot of different kind of things, which makes you very, very marketable in that um, um, employers are looking for people that, that may not necessarily be so, so, so focused or whatever. I'd heard uh, years ago that people with a liberal arts degree that you, know, you, you may not out of the gate uh, kind of like get the big jump that like engineering majors or computer science majors get. But then after a bit of time, you know, what happens is that you know, you, you're, your training has been such that you get to think in um, very different kind of ways, maybe more out of the box kind of thinking. And you actually are a lot more adaptable and, and maybe trainable, and, and trainable may not be the best word, uh, but skilled, um, skill building um, down the road. And so then you actually probably catch up uh, with other kind of disciplines. And so a lot of it, again, it has to do with the way that, um, that you, you, know, you slant the degree and you can promote the degree any way you want to. Same thing as you know, the electives that you take or the minors that you get. Uh, you definitely can also, you know, kind of like spend that on your resume that you've got, you know, these, you've got a minor in such and such, which does give you some disciplinary expertise in that area. Um, so um, very, very flexible um, degrees, uh, except for the pre-law, that's, that's very, very prescribed. And the African American studies is a lot more prescribed also. And so that's definitely getting an in-depth an in look um, into different types of um, African American um, you know, political systems, you know, business kind of things or, or whatever um, along those lines. So I believe Ms. Wiggins, would that be next on, on the alphabet? <laughs> I, I think I'm before your apple, al <laughs> apples. <laughs> <laughs> alphabet. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Gail Wiggins and I'm interim chair of journalism and mass communication and so excited to spend a little time with you today to talk about our department. Uh, as previously mentioned, we have uh, three concentrations and that's mass media production. If you're interested in working behind the scenes in broadcast production, video production, film, uh, TV, radio, um, mass media production is definitely the avenue. Uh, photography as well. Uh, if you're interested in multimedia journalism, uh, the students in that um, degree area, I call it our purest form of journalism that we offer in that students learn how to write, report. Um, we talk about news gathering, um, 
we actually uh, talk about producing content from multiple platforms, whether it's radio, whether it's television, whether it's print or digital. Um, and then, of course, public relations, which is a strategic communication process. And it is you become that liaison between the the company that you represent and its public. And there are a lot of opportunities in each one of those areas in terms of of employment, uh, just having the strong communication skills, being able to write well and being uh, creative actually allows for a number of opportunities in the area. Um, in addition to the three concentration, uh, concentrations, we also have a radio station, we have our own television studio, uh, the newspaper, and we also have a digital platform, which is called the Blue and Gold Post. So students are constantly uh, applying the techniques and strategies and things that you're learning in your class, and you're able to work um, in these different applications uh, at our radio station and TV studio as, as well as writing for the newspaper because that's where you're going to gain your experience. And then after you have spent time at those different media outlets, then the next thing would be an internship. And so while we encourage internships as soon as you complete that freshman year, um, and we also encourage that you do one each summer, uh, if you possibly can, because of course, the more experience or the experiential opportunities that you are involved in, then of course, those things are going to look great on your resume. It is going to make you marketable uh, when it's time to, to enter into the next avenue, which would be your career choice. So um, our students uh, engage in a, I say, uh, a four credit, uh, which means you get credit for the actual internship course. And, uh, and so students are encouraged to, to work at uh, uh, radio stations, television stations, uh, as well as technical companies, um, uh, chemical companies. I mean, you name it, there is a place for communication student. And, um, and then of course, after you've completed your, your internship opportunity, then the next thing would be to land a job, uh, an entry level job in the industry. Uh, we have a very, very strong relationship with our alumni. Uh, they are all over the globe um, and we're extremely excited about uh, uh, the track record that we have um, in terms of where our, our alums are working. I'm quite sure there is one in your area, uh, but when you turn on the television, um, you know, there may be a reporter there who graduated from journalism and mass comm from North Carolina A&T. Uh, there will be a lot of students working behind the scenes. Um, uh, a lot of students uh, working at the local network, the local stations, as well as the um, major networks. Uh, as I mentioned to you, oh, oh, let me not forget the sports too. We have uh, a number of our alums as well as our students who intern with uh, various sporting agencies as well. Um, so we're excited about uh, the different opportunities uh, in journalism and mass communication. We want you to come along and join us. Our students call themselves the Crosby Kids uh, and they are that simply because um, the, the journalism department is housed in Crosby Hall, but not only that, the very first president of North Carolina A&T State University was John Crosby, and, uh, and he was also a newspaper publisher. So I'm just, get, again, extremely excited that you're interested in journalism and mass comm, and we're going to help you along the way. We're very uh, interactive, we're engaging, um, a very, very strong family, and, um, and we know that, that there are, well, as we always say, that you too can get there from here, and from here would be North Carolina A&T. Welcome again to today's VOH. Good afternoon, everyone. As they would say, they say the best for last. My name is Greg Horton, and I'm the interim chair for Visual and Performing Arts. And we offer, as um, Dr. Whitley said, 
three areas in the visual performing arts, uh, music, uh, visual art, and theater. Um, in theater, we offer the BFA in technical theater and or acting. And in uh, music and art, art, we offer a BA, both in a uh, BA in education and the BA in, in the, there's a general, generalist degree in music and an individual degree in music. Um, we all offer, um, well, in two of the programs, we are accredited, nationally accredited. Music has been accredited since 1986 and theater has been accredited with the National School of Theater since 1978. Um, we are very proud of that. And as, as the, the associate dean said as well, um, theater, arts, and music are, uh, well, actually theater and arts, art and, and theater, excuse me, are number one, num number one in the uh, state of North Carolina uh, at any HBCU. And in the country, uh, music is number four, theater is number two, and art is number three. So that's really some great ratings, right? So if you want to be a part of a great department and do some great things in the visual and performing arts, we welcome you and we hope that you will come and, and um, take part. Um, do remember that if you want to be a part of music, you must have um, some music experience. Um, and we hope that you are almost a prodigy, not quite, but um, that you do um, have to be able to read music uh, because they will give you a theory test and also an instrumental test. Uh, whether that's voice or um, an actual instrument. Uh, the marching band is a part of us, but it's kind of not a part of us. Uh, but if you want to be a part of the the golden, the blue and gold machine, uh, machine you have to audition as well. Um, and usually in the summers, they uh, do intake, and you would have to see uh, uh, Dr. Kenneth Ruff, who is the director of the bands. Uh, we have um, two uh, wonderful choirs in the um, program, in the music program, the chamber singers and the university choir. All are nationally acclaimed. Um, the university choir has been to the White House three times uh, in the last 10 years. And um, so we are so, so happy of, about that. Um, if you want to work hard, if you want to uh, gain some really great instruction in the three areas, if you are not afraid to be yourself, if you are not afraid of, uh, of going beyond um, what is asked of you, then you certainly want to become a part of the visual performing arts programs. Uh, we have study abroad and we also have um, um, relationships with, uh, with um, programs uh, for internships, uh, both in all three of the areas. Um, we are a Disney select school for the music and theater areas. Uh, and so that means that if uh, we feel like you are Disney worthy, um, we will call them and say, we have two, three students who are ready to come to your, uh, your programs at Disney and they will take you automatically. Um, so there's some great things going on in the visual performing arts. Uh, I hope that you will make the decision to come to North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University, but I also hope that you will become a major in visual and performing arts. Thank you so much. Okay, and we actually do have a from history and political science. Uh, even though you're wearing my name, that's not who you are. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yvonne De Haith, and on behalf of Dr. Smallwood, the chairman of the Department of History and Political Science and faculty and staff, I want to welcome you again to the open house and to the department. As Dr. Whitley said a few minutes ago, we offer undergraduate degrees in history, history education, and also a master's degree in history, as well as a BA degree in political science. I'm here really to talk about the activities that we can offer students. Um, I am a product of the department. That's probably one of the reasons why Dr. Smallwood asked me to be here on his behalf. Um, some of the activities that we engage in in the, in the department include the wonderful annual Gibbs Lecture Series. And last year we had our 32nd annual lecture and seminar for students at A&T. 
They brought in the community. I also teach high school. I brought in over 100 high school students and students at a and in our department, they take the lead and they present papers and they discuss issues of the day and they connect that to current events. It's a two day phenomenal experience. We've also had the opportunity to take students to places in other countries such as Russia, um, we took students, seven students, not only from the history department, but from other departments to South Africa last year. And they were there for 11 days. It was amazing. So if you want more information about the degrees and activity and focusing in on your interest with political science and history, please give Dr. Smallwood a call and I'll be more than happy to tell you about some of the wonderful opportunities you will have after you graduate, such as working in law enforcement, working in museums. We have mayors who've been elected, county commissioners, board of education, and also working for elected officials. You'll be prepared to do those things with our department's guidance. Thank you. And I see that we're getting a little short on time, but Shay Braswell is with us. And so I'd actually like for her to um, 